I recreated real rockets in Spaceflight Simulator, all the way from the 1944 V2 rocket to the SpaceX Falcon 9. I am creating everything, the moon landing, the ISS, even a secret future rocket that is still in development. But let's first go back in time to Germany, 1944. First we're creating the V2 rocket. This was the first rocket ever. Now creating the specific shape is a bit difficult, but I think this looks decent. Now let's add the coloring. Oh, and the probe to control it of course. Perfect. And now let's test it out. It isn't made to go into space, it just needed to reach England. And in real life it was a bit more explosive, but this is good enough. To actually go to space we'll have to move 1600 kilometers east to the Soviet Union. Now the Sputnik 1 was the first satellite. It didn't carry humans yet. Because it was a secret Soviet program from 1957, there's not many high quality pictures. But the rocket looked something like this. So we got three engines, the little wings, a second stage. Now let's make it gray. And then the probe, perfect. Oh, it's too big. Now it's small. Let's launch. We're in space. Out of fuel. Stage 2. Okay, we're in orbit. Deploy the satellite. What a waste that this entire rocket is now burning up. Maybe in 50 years I can make some sort of reusable rocket. Anyway, now it's time to, uh, uh, I don't think Sputnik 1 did anything. It was just there like, hey, I'm in space. Isn't that cool? What's even cooler is getting humans into space. The Vostok rocket was really similar to the Sputnik rocket, except it had a capsule for a person. With the help of mods, I could get the colors right. And now this sphere, good luck making a sphere in SFS. This is, this is dreadful, but it's the best possible option. Now let's attach it and launch. What's up guys, Yuri Gagarin here. Today we are in space, so don't forget to like, subscribe. Now let's get back to the earth. Wait, how do I get back to the earth? Let's try that again. So we're in space and we should go down any moment now. Ah, I'm burning. No. Ah. Okay, I survived. Now let's deploy the parachute. That's it. The first human in space. But for the next rocket, we'll have to move 8,000 kilometers west to America. Next, we're recreating the moon landing. Apollo 11. It was done using a Saturn V rocket, which, despite being created in 1967, is still the strongest rocket ever made. Although the secret future rocket will beat it. So it consisted of three parts. The Saturn V, the space module, and the lunar module. The Saturn V got everything into orbit. The space module then carried the lunar module to the moon and remained in space. The lunar module landed and went back to the space module, which then returned everyone back to Earth. This is going to be difficult. First, we need the Saturn V. Now, there is no USA tech here in SFS, so we'll just put United. United what? No one knows. Next up, the lunar module and the space module. Create some fairing around it. Perfect. Launch. 600 million people are watching this live, so if this fails, it will be really embarrassing. We're in space. Now detach. And let's get to the moon. We're almost there. Our trajectory is getting close. Now slow down. Time to land. There it is. There's the moon. We did it. And now the return. Do I even have enough fuel left? I'm going up. I should encounter the space module. There it is. Everyone go back. Now let's return. If you think putting humans on the moon is impressive, wait until you see what the secret future rocket does. Here we go. Ah, it's burning. No, heat shield protect me. I can hear the rest of the rocket exploding. And now let's land. I hope the impact doesn't kill me. Ah. Oh, it was just a docking port. I survived. That wasn't the only thing the Saturn V did. Four years later, the first American space station was launched. Skylab. This is what it looked like. So we'll do two launches. One to put the space station there and want to get people there. First the station. We need some solar panels, a capsule and a docking port. Now if I... It should fit within the Saturn. We can even make the top smaller. Now let's launch. We're in space, so detach. The station is in place. Now this space station is nothing compared to the ISS, which I will also be building soon. But first, get some people to Skylab. Just a small dockable rocket. Wait, so we're using a big rocket to carry a small rocket into the sky? Now let's detach and get the small rocket into position. There it is. We're really close. There. No, get back. Right, we brought people to the Skylab. But there was a problem. Skylab gradually got closer to the Earth every day. And it was going to burn up soon. NASA decided that they would save it using the space shuttle. Only one problem. It hadn't been developed yet. So a race against the clock began. How do I even make this? The shuttle is in front of the orange thing, but SFS is 2D. Maybe like this. But then where do I put the shuttle? This is terrible. As the development of the shuttle kept being delayed, Skylab kept getting closer to the Earth. I really have no idea how to build this. Maybe something like this. We have the orange part, now the shuttle, and a wing. This is starting to look decent, but it was already too late. Everyone get into the escape pod. We are going back to Earth. Goodbye, Skylab. At least we made it back safely. Maybe we need a new space station. Some kind of international one even. The space shuttle was finished. No! So with just this engine, it tilts right. But with both engines, it tilts left. So I have to constantly turn it on and off. This is so terrible. SFS was not made for the space shuttle. We're in space. Now detach the shuttle. This is working decently. Now let's land. Slow down so I don't burn up. Oh no, I'm still burning. No! 
Okay, I managed to survive re-entry. Now let's deploy the parachutes. Parachutes? Isn't the whole point of a space shuttle that it lands like a plane? That's not possible in SFS, so we use parachutes. I hope we don't die upon impact. Yes! So that was the space shuttle. Soon we'll be using it. But first, the furthest away object ever. The Voyager Pro. It's at 23 billion kilometers away from the sun. And we'll catch up to it. So we need three legs. This looks good. And the giant antenna. And now, the Titan rocket that carried it. We need to get out of the solar system, which requires a lot of power. Don't forget these little orange rockets. Very important. So this is it. Let's launch. Wait, no. The big rockets ran out of fuel before the small ones. I wasn't expecting that. Now let's escape the Earth. Yes. Wait, out of fuel already? We're barely past Mars. I need more fuel. Accelerate. Oh, out of fuel again. But we're getting close to Jupiter. Is this enough fuel? We're barely going up. Yes, we're past Jupiter. No, out of fuel again. Okay, this one. I'm using the most efficient engine in space. If this doesn't work, I'm going insane. We're not accelerating very quickly, but it is efficient. We're almost there. Yes. Now let's detach. At 10 kilometers per second, it will take us 70 three years to catch up. Luckily, time warp. Now to only take us 40 minutes. Wait, we're slowing down? Okay, it will take a bit more than 40 minutes. Goodbye solar system. Okay, so now we're barely at 1.7 billion kilometers. In many games, 2.1 billion is a limit because that's the limit of 32-bit numbers. I'm hoping something similar will happen here. Let's wait and find out. In the meantime, the Hubble telescope is a source of iconic images such as this and this. I'm making it. So we need a lens, a camera, and some solar panels. In real life, this was launched using a space shuttle, but uh... I'm using a Saturn V. Let's go. We're almost in space. We're in orbit. Now detach. So here we are in space looking at the Earth. Now let's take a picture. Wow, this looks great. But Hubble is nothing compared to the James Webb telescope, which I'll also launch soon. If there is a 32-bit limit, we'll run into issues very soon. Very soon. Okay, there's not any issues. Maybe the limit is 9,999,999,999. So let's wait for that. But first, like I promised, the International Space Station. So far, we've seen American and Russian rockets, but this is actually a collaboration. Just like Hubble. In real life, this was done using the space shuttle, but uh, Saturn V it is. First, let's assign the entire space station. This looks great. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this will fit. Okay, so I divided it into modules which can be launched. This will take like eight launches. If you think that's bad, wait until I make Starlink. 5,000 satellites. I can launch multiple modules at once, get into space, get into orbit, assemble, and we just have to do this eight times. Next launch, next launch, next launch. Finally, now let's fully deploy. This is awesome. This would have been way cheaper if I could have used a reusable rocket. But unfortunately, those don't exist yet. Which is why I'm making them. But first, let's check in on the Voyager. I'm at 9 billion kilometers. If there is a limit, I'll find it soon. 3, 2, 1... No! I just want to break SFS, but there is no limit! Okay, uh, if there is no limit, I'll just keep flying, and then one day I'll catch up to Voyager. Finally, a reusable rocket, the Falcon 9. This is the first rocket by SpaceX, a company. Before this, it was only governments that made rockets. What we do is, using a probe and RCS, we can make the bottom half reusable. So we can launch the system and switch to stage 2, which can then get into orbit. In the meantime, the lower half of the rocket is slowing down, so it doesn't burn, and landing right on the ground. Don't fall over? Yes! This will make spaceflight so much easier and cheaper. We'll be using this to create Starlink. And the secret rocket is also from SpaceX. But first, we're going to Mars. Not humans, but robots, which is still cool. For humans on Mars, wait for the secret rocket. So we have this little rover, which is going to Mars. Now let's make the Atlas rocket that takes it there. So now let's go to Mars. We're almost there. Slow down. Curiosity landed in the gill crater, so I need to go there. Yes, right on trajectory. And now parachutes. And now the rover is landing. Detach parachutes. Wait, no. Okay, it didn't kill me. And now I can fly off. Time for some experiments. Wait, no. This rover costs $3 billion. Be careful. Ah! Wait, I survived? We already had the Voyager go away from the sun, but this rocket went towards the sun. The Parker Solar Probe is the fastest object ever built, reaching 200 kilometers per second. How it does this is, it gets really close to the sun, and then gravity makes it... Ah! So first, let's make the Delta IV, and then add the probe, and launch. Remember, 200 kilometers per second is our goal. So we're in orbit of the sun. Let's get closer. Oh, wait, a Mercury flyby. Hello, Mercury. Nice to meet you. Bye. Continue the mission. Get closer and closer and... Oh, wait, a Venus flyby. Hello, Venus. Nice to meet you. Bye. Get closer and closer and out of fuel. Okay, so launch the probe. It looks kind of like a human. Interruption, breaking news. While recording this, the real Parker Solar Probe got hit by a plasma burst. Anyway, back to the video. Here we are, near the sun. 90 kilometers per second. 100 100 kilometers? Ah, I'm surviving. 120 kilometers per second. Wait, we're already leaving? No, we're not fast enough. I know a way to go faster. Straight into the sun. Ah, okay, that wasn't even fast enough. So we're almost doing Starlink and then the secret rocket. But first, the James Webb telescope. We already got pictures from Hubble and this one will be way more epic. Now we don't really have a honeycomb shape in SFS. So I'll use diamond shapes instead. I have to manually edit each one. I can't even copy and paste. Now make all of them yellow. Here we are. And now let's make the Ariana 5 rocket that carried it. Uh, one problem. The widest fairing isn't wide enough. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it works. Now let's get to space. Wait, the middle ran out before the sides? Detach. 
Here we are in space. Now let's take a picture. If we compare this to Hubble, it's clear which is better. Now back to SpaceX. Starlink. Using the Falcon 9, these tiny satellites are launched into the air, giving anyone in the world internet. Here we have one satellite. Here we have 10 satellites inside a rocket. So we can launch, decouple, and then while this rocket goes to space, the bottom half goes to the ground. And as the satellites deploy, the rocket lands. SpaceX has close to 5,000 satellites. And of course, that's too much for me. There's no way I'd actually launch that many satellites, right? And then the final secret future rocket. The secret future rocket is the SpaceX Starship. It's still in development. Its first actual launch resulted in this. But when it's finished, it's going to be the most powerful rocket ever. And Elon Musk said that it will be able to take 60 to 100 people to Mars within 10 years. Now it's so big, I had to make a custom engine, which is just two Titan engines inside of fairing. This looks so epic and futuristic. Let's get it into space. Oh no, Starlink. I forgot about it. No! Okay, let's be more lucky next time. Here we are, near Mars. For me, it was a few minutes, but in real life, this journey will take seven months. So now let's detach. Don't burn, don't burn. Yes, we're landing. Humanity finally colonized Mars. And remember, Elon Musk said that this will be real within 10 years. So I'm pretty hyped for that.